Rightio, so today whilst we are talking about the Daiwa Revelry and a full review on this, we'll talk about some of the features of the new reel, I'm gonna take the opportunity to have a yarn about some of the things that I look for in high-end reels. Now, this reel does cost $499, and it's got a few of the features that I think are probably worth looking for if you're gonna spend that amount of money on a reel. Of course, we're giving one away in the size of your choosing, so let's get into it. So as luck would have it, I actually got my hands on this reel the same day that Daiwa announced the Revelry online when they did their product release video back in August. There was actually a bit of a mix up in the mail. I ended up getting a 2500 size, sent it back and then got the 2000 size, but I did get some photos of it side by side. Both models that I've looked at so far are actually final samples, but if I understand correctly, these are exactly what you get in the final released version that actually went out last week and should be on sale in stores as of today. Now my first impressions of of the reel as I unboxed them from the mail was both positive and mixed. For me, it looked really nice. I liked the colors of it. And for my son, he thought it had this Iron Man theme and immediately liked it because he likes the Avengers at the moment. And so, right, visually, I reckon they look really good, but I'm not a fool. There will be a percentage of people out there that do not like the black and red maroon uh, color combination. And that's probably the same way that I do not like the orange and black TD Soul colors. I know there'll be a percentage of guys out there that absolutely love that. I just never really took to the TD Soul. And I've said it multiple times on the channel, if you don't like what a product looks like or what uh, color scheme is going on here, you'll generally never use it and you should probably move on. If you do like that red and black combo that is in the Infeet series though, and Shimano have their Vanford or Zodius uh, that is actually that black and red as well. Well, then I'd suggest you're going to like the colors on the Revelry as well. One thing I would say to Daiwa though, is that the colors are almost identical. They're not quite identical. It would have been really nice if that red, that crimson red was the same as the Infeet series rod, but they're ever so slightly off in terms of a red shade. Importantly though, this is quite a nice uh, combo. It weighs around about 250 grams. It's an Infeet Z series uh, 732, a bit of a longer rod. Typically, it's actually a soft plastics rod, but for some reason, I think it might have just been uh, closing out the last session, I've thrown a, uh, a hard body on there. But uh, typically, I'd throw this bad boy as a soft plastics rig. rig. Now, 250 grams, like I mentioned, so you're not gonna fatigue, and you can see me carrying and moving it around the reel from the very back here. It's, uh, it's quite lightweight and really nice and sensitive. Yep. One of the things that jumped out to me straight away when I first got this reel, and I'll show you a bit of a side-by-side -side here, is how much it looked like a Luvius, but it comes in, the Rev comes in at $80 less expensive. Now, I'm gonna call it the Rev. I reckon that's a pretty cool nickname instead of saying Revelry every time. But the Rev is technically exactly the same as a Luvius, aside from the color and two other points. The first is the bail arm. The Luvius is machined out of one piece of high-grade aluminum, I'm pretty sure it is, but the Rev is technically made from two. The second is the rotor, and that's this large piece that goes around the outside of the body. And now, it's ever so slightly thicker on the Revelry, and that results in somewhere between a 10 to 40 gram difference in weight between the models, that is the Luvius and the Rev. But aside from this and the $80 cheaper price tag, there is zero difference. Both are made from their flagship Zion composite body, and all the internals, like the gearing and the bearings, are the same. And for me, when I learned that there were only a couple of things that were different, I thought to myself that I probably would like the uh, Rev in total. Why? Because I actually really like the Luvi. I have owned most of them, uh, most of the versions in the last nine to 10 years, and it's probably one of my favorite reels. I actually missed out on the 2000 size version of this guy, which is the uh, latest Luvius on the uh, market, and had to settle for a 2500 shallow spool. Yep, shallow spool. Uh, 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 yep, shallow spool LT. Now it wasn't what I wanted, so when I learned that there was this slightly different coloured version in the 2000 size, 
size, I definitely made sure that I got my hands on one before they sold out. And that's particularly good because you can get it for $80 cheaper. Up close and personal, the side plate is the same here on the side. The handles are the same, the spool's the same. It's all the same, just with different branding. Couple of things that I will point out though, I was really happy to see the Louvi spool on the Rev because there is this little gizmo here that on the top that I've grown to love since I was made aware of them around about a year ago. If you're looking close here at the bar that sits at the top where you tighten the drag, you'll often see a gap and you can use that gap to conveniently hang your trebles and keep your lures when they are not being used. It's funny, since I've made aware of it, I think I've been using this area here as more so of a, uh, a lure keeper than I have uh, definitely on the reels wherever they're located because first of all it's actually quite consistent every single time it's just right there that's where the lure sits now I'll put this one here but I'll get another reel now this bad boy is the Stella and it's got two uh, spots as well on it. This bad boy has been going for ages. I'm really impressed with this right reel. Now, one of the reasons that I think this is really important is that you don't want to hang your trebles or your line or your hooks anywhere near the internals or the silicon or the torsite, whatever the makeup is on the inside of the guides. You want to keep those nick free and keep them in best in the best shape that you can. Why? Because that line is going to go through that guide quickly. And if you've got nicks on it, particularly when you're fighting a fish and there's load on the line, you don't want to fray your line at all and lose a fish because of it. So by keeping your hooks and anything sharp that's got a barb on it away from any guides and keeping it down here is something that I personally try and do every time. Now, secondly, and it's a little bit convenient that I've got this one in my hand as well, the other thing that I haven't mentioned before that I try and do is keep my high end reels reserved for straight through fluorocarbon. That's probably not the right way to put it because I have braid as well. But if I'm going to put straight through fluorocarbon on a reel, I'm going to buy a straight through fluoro on my high end reels. Throwing straight through fluorocarbon or mono for that matter can be difficult in achieving distances because of the way that it springs and sits on the spool. Braid definitely casts much longer and I feel as though if I want to achieve the same distance when I'm casting fluorocarbon, I'm going to need all the tech and all the Gucci stuff on the reel to help me achieve those distances. If I can, I'll try and go for a longer rod, like this one's a, a 7.5 or a 7.4. Uh, let me have a look here, 7.42. But sometimes I might be working in tight structure and I don't get the ability to use a long rod. So to that end, this is a Stella, a $1,000 reel, rigged with straight through fluorocarbon. And this is the Luvius Aridy that is around about that eight $900 mark, don't quote me. And it as well is uh, rigged with uh, three pounds straight through fluorocarbon. The so what to that is that a lot of the features that are in this Aridy spool or the top of the Aridy spool that let that fluorocarbon come off are in the Luvius spool and thus are in the rev spool because they're the same like I mentioned before. So if you're thinking about throwing straight through fluorocarbon and you want a combo, well, I'd make your purchase accordingly and then bias whatever the more expensive reel that you've got is to fluorocarbon. Now, that generally works. Yes, there will be some exceptions, but it's a nice reel that I apply that you know works well. Now, before I put it away, I should probably tell you about the line that I've got on this bad boy. So it is 12 or 14 pound, one of the two. It's uber thin, uh, goose and braid. It is green and as a default, I usually run around about two rod lengths of uh, four pound fluorocarbon. Sometimes three, depends on uh, the application, but that's usually my default or go to my starting point. In terms of lime green is my preference. I just personally see it uh, against the backdrop of dirty water a little bit nicer. Now let's talk about the giveaway. As always, a big shout out and thank you to those who support the channel. In particular, in this case, Darwa for providing the reel to play around with pre-release and for me to produce this content for you guys. Honestly, I don't know if I need to give the reel back, so I'm not gonna say anything to them, but the engraving uh, stitching is on the back, so it's technically not a production model. I can appreciate why they may uh, want it. Anyway, I'm gonna try and keep it on the boat, so shh. So I'm gonna tell you about the reel because the winner will get to choose the model that they want. It comes in a 2000, a 2500, a 2500 S or shallow, and a 3000. All finesse, custom, or FC, monocoque, and there is another line of four models that are like the HD heavy duty models that 
I can't really comment on because I haven't held one in my hand, but realistically the differences there are that it's got an aluminium body versus a composite one that these FC reels, the ones that I've got, have. I'm gonna talk about why I don't like personally any metals or aluminium in my reel in a moment, but if you want one of these on your boat, you're gonna to have to get involved in this video. So firstly, in the comments below, nominate which model FC MQ reel that you would like and tell me whether or not you like the color. Of course, you're gonna to have to be subscribed to the channel and you're gonna to have to smash that like button as well. So the comment, the like and the subscribe. If you can on helping the channel grow though, remember you can become a member of the channel and contribute as little as a couple of dollars a month to maybe a coffee or something like that. But this is your channel and that will help me remain independent. We've also got some affiliate links going on on most of the videos as well. So if you find a product that you like and there's an affiliate link, I'd really appreciate the support. Anyway, back to the giveaway. In a week from today, I'll announce the winner. And unfortunately, if it is not you, remember the revelry is in stores as of today. Let me think, it's, it's Monday the 8th of November. So three points to finish this video and there's a couple of things in here about the entire dial range that I've been thinking about for a little while. The first is that if you're an estuary angler here in Australia in that light game, I'm not sure that you get a giant amount of benefit by spending all that money and going to an exist over having a Luvius or in this case, the Revelry. I'm a big advocate for saying that you don't need the high end gear to be able to catch a fish, but it is certainly nicer to sit in your BMW M3 and take it for a drive than it is your dad's 1970s or 80s Datsun 180. I know some of you won't know that car, but Google it, it's a bomb. And honestly, I reckon that's the position of the Luvius or the Rev. And it is that BMW M3. It's got everything that I need and it's lightweight. I've got an idea that when they released this Luvi, it was the lightest model that they had ever made. So I could spend more and get my Ferrari that's an exist, or I could be just really completely content with my BMW M3. It's got all the features that I ever need. It's clean, it's stylish, and it casts really, really well. It performs quite nicely and I would much rather two of these at $500 than I would a exist at $1,000 every day of the week. Two of these, and I'm going to be a very happy person over that one reel of the exist. Now, secondly, in Australia, we're generally exposing our reels to the elements, and in particular, salt water. And no matter how you skin it, that generally means some sort of oxidization or rust and corrosion in some extreme cases. The Luvius, the Revelry, and the cheaper frames from Daiwa, and the Shimano Vanford are all composite bodies for this reason and there are many others from a bunch of different brands but you get the idea personally i preference composite and i really find it difficult justifying how to jump above the luvius particularly in that dial range to say go a certate or an exist or the other model that's in there that I can't recall right now. If you want something a little bit more handy and you jump to the Certate that is a metal-based body, well then that's great. That's gonna give you a little bit more rigidity, a little bit more crank, high drag as well. But that brings me to my third point. It's not always the smartest idea to go for the heaviest piece of drag or the more drag is not always better. I was talking to the product development manager who developed these reels and I actually asked him why on some models did they go for five kilos versus 10 kilos in the same line of the Revelry? His response was, with the five kilo reels or the, the reels that have five kilos of drag, you can be more precise with the amount of drag that you set over the 10 kilo one. And I guess if you consider that I, if I make one click on the five kilo one, that's gonna be worth half the value of one click on the 10 kilo one. Now it doesn't always work like that, I know, I get it, but you can be more precise with the reel that's got less drag on it. And I think realistically, when do you need more than five kilos inside the estuary system of Australia? If you're going for your bread and butter, brim, whiting, uh, flathead, that type of fish, well, you only ever need two or three kilos. If you're going for your Mulloway, your Rat Kings in the harbour, for example, well then, I get you might wanna bump that up to 10 kilos, and this reel has uh, caters for both of those scenarios. Anyway, that is about me done for the week. I appreciate you hanging around. Remember the giveaway, stay safe. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.